So guys, here's the motherboard as you can see, um, socket 7, it's got the uh, the VIA chipset, I think it's VIA, I could be wrong, um, it's got an AGP, uh, 3 PCI and uh, 2 ISA, but I just pulled the BIOS chip there, it's an award BIOS, uh, PC Partner award BIOS, the PC Partner is actually the brand, um, they're a subsidiary of Zotac, or at least they were. But you can see that there's some uh, corrosion on the pins here. So the idea is I'm going to remove that. Um, I don't have the correct pin size um, socket for that. So I've basically kind of butchered two sock one socket to give me the extra pins to go on there. Um, <clears throat> I'll also have to do a bit of a clean up on those pins. So guys, you can see one of the traces I repaired there, just scraped it away, got some solder on it, and there's a tiny bit of solder mask on it. I didn't do a great job, I'll probably do it again. But just south of that, one of the vias had completely disintegrated, so that's what that bodge wire that goes around to the other side is for. So I'm just flipping the board over. And you can see there with the CR2032 battery holder, I put in a new Zener diode some of the traces I repaired there. Didn't have a socket big enough so I used two, kind of cut one down and put it in. You can see our bodge wire coming up over across there again. So that's the repairs nearly done to the um, Super Socket 7 and uh, I just got to get a battery holder and some header pins back in there so that won't take too long. Alright guys, so I've got the Super Socket 7 here and um, I don't know what the clear de uh, definition between a Super Socket 7 and a Socket 7. I'm going to say that it has to have an AGP port and some USB. Um, might be whoa, wrong tweezers, but um, an AGP port and a USB controller, host controller. So, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe there's somewhere you guys can let me know. A clearer definition of what the difference between Super Socket 7 and a Socket 7. So you'll notice in um, in the bottom corner here I have uh, the jumper settings. So um, I believe this bank here, this matrix of jumpers is fine. This is JP11. Um, so that one's fine, um, I think. So I'll just look at JP11 on the sheet. Yeah, that one's fine. Um, it's fine. So we have off, uh, closed, off, off, off. Um, or as you would see it from reading from right to left under Pentium, Intel Pentium 166 megahertz. It's um, off, 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 on, off. So we're good. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull all the jumpers off uh, this area here. Just place them out there. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, scroll up here. Because um, I don't know if you can see where my mouse cursor is, but it's the top right hand corner of the diagram there JP 12, 13, 14, 1, 2, and 6 that we're interested in right now um, to configure our CPU. So the first one we have to contend with is. Uh, this guy here, JP6. So JP6 is open, so I'm not going to place anything on it just just right now. And um, so I can clearly see the others. The next guy is JP2. 
And if we go down to JP2 on the MMX166, so these are all pin 1 across the top. So it tells me that I've got to close the bottom two jumpers on, um, on JP2. So, and then we have JP12. And JP12 doesn't have a specified position, but if we go back up to the default position, it would be on 2 and 3, same as in our diagram. So if it doesn't specify we need to change it, then we leave it at the default. So just double check it doesn't specify a JP12 and it doesn't. So then I have the remaining ones. So I'm going to put them just floating with only one side touching on one. So intents and purposes, they're open. Okay, so finally we need to check the bank in the in this area. So that would be JP5, JP4, JP3 and JP8. So, um, I'm going to clear them. Okay, so I've got them cleared now. got them cleared so this is pin 1 is on this side on the right hand side of the, of the kind of matrix and um, JP 5 is across here 4 3 and 8 so um, for our JP 5 it is saying that we need to close pin 2 and 3. So, indeed these could be going back into the same spot, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. It's a case of getting them on there regardless. So, okay, so we got 2 and 3 on. JP4 is the same. Yeah, funny feeling these are going into the exact same place, but you're better off taking them off, reading the sheet, before you put them back on. Um, JP3. Okay, so JP3 is going to be out here. Pin 1 and 2. And JP8 is unspecified. So JP8 being unspecified, we're going to go to the default. And the default is pin 1 and 2 linked. So there we go. So I believe that was probably quite, probably exactly the same as, um, as I had it. But it doesn't matter, at least now I'm sure. So sorry about the poor quality of video there. It's not the best. I'll try and show you those jumpers. So, um, so these ones are basically controlling um, the amount, the speed of the, of the, tell them the the system, the speed of the processor and the bus. Um, and then if we slide it over, um, these can are for our voltages. So uh, something else I might show you when I have this out is if you notice on the side of the BIOS chip, uh, when I replaced the socket, I didn't have one um, with enough pins. So um, Let's see if I can get this chip out to show you better, but that socket is made up of two different sockets. So I'll try and get it out. 
I'll probably cut past the procedure of taking it out. So yeah, I just popped the battery out there. There's probably going to be a lot of people disgusted with me for moving the uh, BIOS ROM before disconnecting the battery. And we got it out with no pins, uh, no pins damaged, which is always nice. But yeah, um, you can clearly see there now, so there was, I cut, um, I cut a socket, the top of a socket off, and I decided to put it up here, pip by pin one, that kind of uh, bodge socket. Um, you can't see it, but underneath this socket, um, I thought the corrosion had come in from the CR2032, but the main kind of point of corrosion was here, and um, I don't know if you can see it there, it's not going to be great on this camera. But you can just barely see a diode down there, that had crumbled into bits, the original surface diode. Um, and I had some ma you can kind of see some repairs I've done down in between the socket and uh, the CR2032 holder. And there's a bodge wire here that goes around to the other side of the board. Because underneath this socket here, on uh, underneath this pin right here, where the bodge wire goes, um, a via totally crumbled there. Um, absolutely crumbled. So uh, that's what this bodge wire is making up for. So I'll see if I can get flip the board around. So yeah, um, you can see that our bodge wire comes in over the edge here and travels travels along to one of the uh, IDE ports, um, one of the pins on the IDE port. And you can also see that I had to, uh, one of the traces there was getting very black. Sorry, now there's limited focus on this camera. So, um, yeah, I had to kind of get, scrape away at this trace. Get it all nice and kind of uh, shiny again. And then went over it with some solder and some wick. And I sealed up the whole area then with solder mask. The only differences around the battery is before I soldered on the battery here, um, just to be overly cautious, I put a bit of captain tape, this blue captain tape, down um, before I soldered this on. Um, at first, yeah, I thought this leak came from this CR2032 battery, but it didn't. It was as if like a bug or an insect had died in here. Or maybe a spider had, you know, laid some eggs in here or something gross like that. Um, because it was just very localised, uh, the damage. I did have to do some repairs to our uh, BIOS chip. Uh, by repairs, not really repairs, but I had to kind of sand some of the corrosion off the legs of the chip. So in places you can actually see the copper underneath. And... I may, I may peel back the labels because I have an EEPROM programmer, so I may peel back the labels, figure out what type of chip this is, and uh, maybe it's mentioned in the data sheet. We'll have to see, but that'd be the plan to peel off the label um, slightly and see if I can get the, the the model of the chip. And I might order uh, an EEPROM and see if I can I can make my own BIOS. So there we go, wind bond. Um, I'm not going to remove the award by a sticker there, but um, a 29EE011. So I'll write that down somewhere. I'll see if I can get my hands on one of those. I may have one. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm, I have a little diary where I keep kind of everything I've got to do, but I'm just going to write down the name of uh, of our BIOS chip and I'm also going to make a note that I need to get a 
Well, I've got them ordered, but I need to fit uh, a capacitor here. Uh, I believe it's C16? Yeah, C16. So, C16, 10 microfarad, 25 volt, I believe it is. So, um, that's the final cap I need to put on the board. I've done all the others. So, uh, needless to say, our EE prom here is discontinued. Um, you can see some examples I've pulled up from eBay um, down in the corner here. And a lot of those are pulls, so they're probably not going to be very good. So um, what I'm going to do for now is I am going to set up my um, EEPROM programmer and I'm going to dump this ROM. Uh, and diff it against uh, the one I downloaded from the PC Partner website and see if it's see if it's the same. I um, don't know if you can see that there, but the award BIOS is 1998 on it. So yeah, I'll check the uh, the BIOS version that I downloaded and diff it against this to see if there's any difference. Um, but we'll go with this BIOS chip for now. Okay, guys. So I've got my uh, EEPROM programmer hooked up. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to see if we can uh, dump our BIOS. So select chip, EEPROM, and uh, let me make that bigger. There it is. Ah. Okay, that was a bit of a waste of time. Um, win bond we want. Win bond. There we go. And W29. So W29. So W29 EE11. Okay, uh, position. So, um, I want to read. No any chip placed. That's some great chinglish. Um, so I don't know if it's going to show up on camera here, but some of the legs on this are still pretty dark. Um, in places. So um, I guess the fiberglass or fiberglass 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 brush should um, should bring them up. I'll polish them up a bit and see if I can get it to read. Clean it off with a, some alcohol before I put it back in the programmer as well. Don't want to get dirt in my uh, ZIF socket. So yeah I've got the um, brush out to a little you can still see that leg there is kind of looking very grey. Um, you can see the kind of coppery sheen to some of the legs. Yeah, the, the chip rot on this, uh, the leg rot on this chip is pretty bad. So um, I'm sure it probably would post. Well, if it doesn't post, I know my first uh, um, troubleshooting point of start is. Or, so like uh yeah i'm gonna have to order or at least try and hunt down one of these eproms um but with that said it would have cleaned a little bit more i think it will post though i say optimistically but, um yeah maybe it's clean enough hopefully it's clean enough i wiped it down with some alcohol um indeed if i had a, a socket to put it in and put it into the 30, uh, 36 pin dip socket and then into the brown programmer. Yeah, there might be. Okay, so, um, if it doesn't read, then, yeah, no chip placed. Just put it back in for now, see if it posts once I've got a processor in there and, and stuff like that. But I won't rely on this chip as a long-term solution. I'll go out and try and find um, a replacement. So guys, I've gone ahead and ordered two of those chips, um, just in case. Um, I have a feeling that this guy is still going to post, but just in case I've ordered two. Um, so take about a week or so for those to guess, get here, I guess. Um, 
With that said, I've looked up the data sheet. We scroll down to the features section, a single 5 volt program and erase operations. So there's no reason at all that my uh, top 3000 programmer shouldn't have been able to read that chip unless there was something wrong with it. Pin 19 is bidirectional and it's data in and out. So that was the pin that was uh, fairly well corroded on our chip, which isn't good, guys, which isn't a good sign at all. So, um, yeah, I still believe there's a chance we can post with this, that just because our EEPROM programmer wasn't detecting it, that um, um, we can post, because it's, it's quite tightly heddled in there. There's probably a better contact from this socket than there is on the ZIF socket over there. Um, but if we can't post, this is our first suspect right here. Because um, as I'll show from the photos, or have you probably already seen from the photos of the uh, corrosion around this area, it was pretty extensive. Uh, it was heavily localized, but very extensive, uh, requiring some trace repair, some component replacement. So yeah, um, it's disappointing that we couldn't get a read off it, but um, until I can't post with this chip, I won't uh, write it off. So yeah, there's going to be a bit of work needed uh, before we actually go attempting to post. Um, we're going to have to get that capacitor in there. Um, I've also ordered capacitors for the Voodoo 32000, so when that arrives, um, before we put it in our AGP slot, we're going to uh, put on some surface mount caps. Um, I'll be using the uh, the hot air station for that. But yeah, um, all those parts are ordered, so in the next couple of days they should arrive, and once they do, we'll get cracking. Um, again, I'm going to leave the battery out until we're ready for postums. So, we have our Intel Pentium MMX166 installed. And I have some captain tape around the perimeter, just to keep things nice and tidy. But we're going to be using my RS Pro heatsink compound. Um, of late, I kind of only use this stuff for voltage regulators, things like that, but considering this is like a ceramic uh, package, we're probably better off using that. Um, yeah, I could, you know, I could go putting like Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut or something like that on it, or Arctic Silver or something like that, but when you see the heatsink, um, you know, come on. You know, of course, there will be people who will make the point that, you know, a good thermal paste is going to give me better performance and better deltas and temperatures and all that stuff. But you know what? It's a Pentium 1, guys. Come on, leave me alone. So, um, thoroughly cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. Um, a post-it note that I folded several times. It should help us spread it. Uh, once it's spread, I'm going to peel away the captain tape. But, um, yes. Now there might be oil. There might have been some separation going on in this tube, I don't know. enough for now. Let's spread that around. Alright, 
So, I'm sure there's going to be people who think I've used too much. There's going to be others who think I've used too little. There's going to be some people who think I didn't spread it on the right way. Um, it's the problem with thermal paste and CPUs for some reason. I probably did put a little too much on there, but anyways. Um, oakley doakley. Let's peel off our captain tape. So my idea is to hook on here. Okay, that's a pain in the ass. Then it's vacuumed on. Okay. Try and keep my hands as clean as possible. Oh god, it doesn't want to come off at all. I'm gonna have to slide it off. At least we know the tension is gonna be alright. It's going to get messy. Ugh. So, that was the wrong way around. So there's probably still others that will be horrified by this. Because I should buy right be using lintless uh, swabs. Those shit are expensive. Radio. So, of course, I had to hit the camera. We're gonna go this way. It's much healthier looking. So that roughly in place, I'm just going to pivot. Because at the moment it's more important for me to see than the camera to see. Because I'd rather not have footage of this than to do it wrong. Oh, it seems to be a turn or something. No. That's just in the actual clip here. Now there's another type of thermal grease you can get. Um, I'll put the part number up in the corner. Um, I think I'll get mine from Farnell. Well, it's better than this RS stuff, but it's, you know, it's the same chemistry, slightly, but it's got um, stuff in it. It's it's designed for basically using in at sea, in marine use, so it doesn't break down the oils and it doesn't separate. That's the only problem with this stuff is there are oils in it that will dry out over time. Fair enough. It takes a long, long time, but there are oils in it. There we go. So, we have finished installing our processor. Wasn't that lovely? So, I can just imagine the comments, but you know what? It's done. Um, I've used too much paste, not enough paste. I think I used the right amount, to be honest. 
It's a shame I didn't have a proper tool to spread it. But we have our heatsink on. Which is good. Um, it protrudes a little on this side towards the um, sim slots, but that's okay because we're using dims, we're not using sims. Um, so the wire, as long as it's out of the way of the fan and we're getting, yeah, as long as that wire is out of the way of the fan and we're getting air moving across the board, we'll be fine. So guys, I just wanted to show you the case real quick. This is the Baby AT case. Um, I put a little bleach on it to clean it up and it got rid of some of the browning, but I'm not going to retro it. Uh, there's still a little brown up here and stuff, but it's fine. But just to give you an idea, there's my um, XP tower, so there's quite a bit of difference. Here's the uh, this side of the case. Um, you can see I have a new power supply put in there. As many of you may know, I do not trust old power supplies, so that's a new one. Uh, it's AT style, it's modded. I'll leave a link to where you can get them on eBay. And that's the ROM. So let me just flip the case around and I can show you the other side. Yeah, some basic cable management. But yeah, we can flip it around and we'll have a look at the other side. Okay, so there's our inside the other side of the case. So basically we got a little fan here, um, set to draw air in, hopefully exhaust it out the back. Um, I might set it up the other way actually to exhaust out the front. We'll see. Um, PC speaker, blah -dee, blah -dee, blah Got some cable management going there. Um, got some kind of cable ties on my ID cables to keep them nice and neat and keep them kind of tucked away there. Um, that's the only annoying thing. This uh, floppy connector has to come across so we'll have to get creative with how we uh, deal with that. And the power will also be coming across into this corner but we should keep kind of the center area of the case clean and kind of clear so that there's airflow across the graphics card and uh, for the CPU yeah so that's the case um, it's tiny it's uh, even smaller than my uh, current ATX setup which I thought was small but yeah baby AT what are you gonna do so it's gonna be a while before um, the rest of the parts arrive um, so I thought I'd get this video out so let's just kind of recap on what we've done we have added uh, 256 megabytes which is the maximum for this board um, of PC66 uh, DIMMs um, we have Hyundai at the front and an NEC brand at the back um, we recapped the entire board um, I even got the little capacitor down here um, 10 microfarad, uh, microfarad 25 volt we configured the jumpers and installed our CPU, um, which is fine. Now I did have to uh, mess with one of the retention brackets um, on this side and it's sitting much more kind of flush all around the chip now because of it. Uh, yeah, it was something was a bit weird about it. It was kind of kinked at a weird angle. So I was able to straighten it up and kind of uh, get it down like that. But yeah. Um, Everything else seems to be working fine. Um, so in the next video, uh, we'll be creating our EEPROM, um, uh, fixing up our uh, Voodoo 2 3000, um, recapping it and installing it. Um, we'll see if we can, at that stage, if we can get the machine to post. Uh, if it does, we'll install uh, Windows 98. And if all that's successful, we'll install the uh, Creative Sound Blaster Live card. And that should be it. We should have everything on um, at that stage. I have an 80 gigabyte uh, uh, Seagate hard drive in there, uh, an IDE one. That should do the trick. Um, I am considering going for a CF Flash kind of solution, but 
only time will tell if I actually go that direction. I may. It might be nice to have uh, two setups. I have uh, one CF card with Windows 95 and, a, and another with uh, Windows 98. And that way I can power down and um, kind of swap out uh, uh, OS's. Which might be an idea. So I'll look into that. Maybe I'll, that'll be an upgrade for the future. But definitely in the next video we will be going for our post. Um, I've also got, uh, if you see down here, this is a USB 1 header, so we will have USB on this. Hopefully there's legacy support so I can run a keyboard, um, USB keyboard on startup. I have an AT style keyboard, it's not the best, but it'll do um, to get us up and running. But it would be nice if I could use, use the USB mouse. I have a, a serial mouse, but it would be nice to uh, get a, a USB mouse. There's uh, some pins here along the AT uh, side the AT connector, and they're a PS2 header for a mouse. So I might see if I can um, maybe get um, a PS2 backplane um, to populate one of the upper slots um, on the case. But... All in all, I think if we can get the USB legacy working on this board, I don't know if the chipset supports USB legacy, but we'll, we'll find out in the next video. So cool, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll chat to you all again.